What's up, shooters? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to SP Reviews, where today I'm going to be reviewing some tracks off of an album that's been three years in the making by Long Term Parking. And if we switch over to here, the truth is that I actually haven't listened to um, Long Term Parking before. This is a first, first, uh, first impressions for me uh, for their album Luxury Luxury, which is quite exciting to be honest. It's always exciting when I get to hear uh, a new artist's album for the first time. You know, you get to hear their stuff in context as opposed to a single where it's just one part of what they do. They're a three-piece, so I've got a, a excuse the pronunciation, a Kolob, Kristinek, and Pavel Britza. Apologies if I mispronounced these, I, I haven't meant to. There are also other musicians that are supporting these guys in specific tracks as we go through the three. For instance, The Middle Way also features Carlos Alderete on vocals. So we're going to listen through The Middle Way, King E, and Stayed Back from Start to Finish. We're going to hear what we think. Let's go. Let's do this. Oh, nice volley there. We're going on a plane? No, this is... Remember to look after your ego. It's very unsettling, Don't isn't it? Don't let it get out of hand. I make it a point to always carry it with me wherever I go. It takes way more than good intentions to keep it happy. The thought may count. But it's gonna take more than that. Way more than that. It's very unsettling, isn't it? Even though we haven't really, I suppose, had much of it yet, you get the feeling you're in for a hell of a time with these really kind of gritty synths and the pulsating and the panning of those parts in stereo field. Oh, and guitar parts now, I see. I like the fact that it's unpredictable though. I like the fact that I don't know where we're going with this. Okay. Well, I, great. How many different ways have we expressed the vocals so far just in the verse? We could have just had the vocals sit in the center, but no, we've had the double tracking and the filtering and the effects chain on it, but a modulation there. And among the guitar parts and that chord note groove on the drums. I mean, damn, man. Is there something inside nothing? Instantly, it has given me an existential crisis. Yeah, the middle way. You know, are there other alternatives? Is this all there is? Is this what we're stuck with? Is this what we're left with? It's a good thing to talk about. It's it's not super happy and uplifting and it doesn't make you want to go out and, and have a great day after hearing it. But at the same time, I don't think music's meant to always be that. It's just meant to be an art honest artistic expression, isn't it? These falsetto-ish kind of It's like the the, the uh, it's unsettling with the repeaters in there as well as the um falsetto the the head voice there. I'm not again like I don't dislike it. It's just it's resonating with me in a way that is uncomfortable. I think that's maybe the point. There's also this like 
this hiss or this hum among the piano parts. Like an LP, like a vinyl kind of sound to it, you know? And then we just had that drum fill come in. You really don't need more than this on the percussion, do you? I like how slowly the voice in your head is becoming more and more distorted as you consider it and slowly lose your own sense of self, as if reality is dissipating before your eyes. You got that oscillation on the eighth note groove with those synthy bits. With the very vague sub levels in those vocal backings. Now, is it worth doing it again and again and again and again? Hits like a train, dude. It hits like a train. You know, I'm gonna say it now, I haven't really heard anything like this before. And that's something after reviewing literally over a thousand songs that it, that doesn't happen often. It doesn't happen often. And um, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Thank you to Long Term Parking for giving me something new to listen to today. I genuinely appreciate that. I'm not really sure what you would call this. I, I know this is a fusion of different elements. There's a few additional people involved with this. We've got Ali Khalil, Fernando Saunders, and Marek Churamak, if I'm not mistaken. Again, apologies if I'm mispronouncing these. Are we going to listen to this one too? So this one might be a little bit busy just due to the extra instruments, you know? All right, hang on. And Ali plays the oud. Fernando is on the bass guitar, and Marek is on the harpsichords. For his majesty king Eater Rain. So we've got a far... Would I say this is more energetic? I suppose it's technically more energetic due to the increased speed and tempo and everything like that. You got almost a 16th note groove on some of those synthy bits, the sequence is going on the sides. It's got an industrial kind of vibe. Those FM synths are out. They're kind of difficult. They're rough around the edges, but I like that. You just texturally, you know, like I don't mean as if it sounds bad or the note choice is wrong. You know, the arpeggios and whatever else is absolutely fine. It's more just that some of the textures within these instruments that are present within this album so far have been a little bit accurate. And I, 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 I think that's totally fine. Great filtering work. Okay. That's a very perky, punchy, synthy bit in here. Nice dynamic range to it though. You know, I like how it's not all the same loudness. We are understanding that we can't just shove that in people's faces and to be instantly palatable.
Are we switching up the time signatures here? Are we cutting some bars down to sort of mix with the mix with the flow of it? Does this count as a solo section? I suppose it would, wouldn't it? I suppose this would count as a solo section. As a nice alternative voice, this voice we have with the singer. Again, having those other synths panned on the side gives that center element a lot more space, and that's what you need to be doing. I nice to hear the percussion a little bit more active in here. Sort of give them sort of some a little bit, a little bit more flexibility here, because up until now they've been basically playing the accents and not a lot else. Or at least they were doing that quite a lot in the middle way. The uh, vocal modulation here, because I should note as well, I haven't really talked about the core members and what they do. Pavel typically does the drums in each of these songs. Co-lead misses around with like the synths, the samples and that sort of vibe. And a lot of the time, Chris Dinnett goes between like the vocals and sometimes does bass guitar duties and stuff like that. So that that the three, the core three members are fairly flexible in what they do. I think that what they're, it, you know, long-term parking are assuming is that you've already got the gist of the story by the time you're at that four minute mark. So that's why they're tending to sort of mutate the vocals a little bit just to get this higher kind of more robotic synthy texture to it. Just because at that point it becomes more of an extra melodic layer in the mix rather than an indicator of what you need to believe next. It sounds like we haven't really found our direction since the middle way. It sounds like we're kind of lost and we're looking for something to, to sort of, to, a way to get your fix, effectively. And the constantly descending chord progression here is an example of getting that little bit of a high and spending the rest of the time going down. Oh, nice to have a fade out here. Again, this was a five and a half minute song, and I mean, I'll level with you. I was okay with what the song was until about the halfway point. The solo kicked in there, which I thought was appropriate. It was nice to have that the midway to split it up. Had a little bit more of the story at the end, which was good, but I don't feel like we could have done more than what we had here. Five and a half minutes was probably the absolute limit for this track. So I'm sure that they, because we do have longer tracks on here, like we have the opening track from the ground. And then we also have Stayed Back, which is the final song for today. But I'm glad we knew to kind of like cut it here and just move on to the next track, you know? That's great. So I enjoyed it. No, I nonetheless enjoyed it. I just didn't want it to overstay its welcome. But yeah, King E. It's great, another great track. It was nice to have different musicians featured in this, and I think that that's kind of that that can make your album really special, as long as people know who else is involved in it, you know, because you wouldn't want to be that band who like doesn't credit the people who came in to do session work or anything like that. They they kind of suck. <laughs> we got stayed back here, the third track today. Let's have a listen through that. Uh, was there anyone else here? Nope. Kristinek, Pavel, and Kolib for this one. This was just the core three, so that's all good. It's nice to hear the three of them on their own for this six minute track. Kind of crazy to think we're already through these three. Nice to have the foley of the people speaking. Um, not, not sure what they're speaking. I'm not sure of the language. Yeah. 
Okay, so we'll open this three bar package, so just six bar passage. It's very experimental, isn't it? It's, it's, it's incredible, to be honest. I mean, I would have never have thought to put that there. And a lot of musicians I review don't think to do stuff like this, but it can work. It's good to think outside the box. We've got chopped slide guitars and in, in, in between like the low bass, low ba bass is low by default. The bass and drums to contrast with these really pretty vocal led acoustic guitar finger style sessions. I mean, I think that guitar has been deliberately EQ'd so it's got like a cut at like 250 hertz. It's really bright. Nice bit of vocal grit here, I dig it, dude. It's It's got that sultry nature to it, you know? Kind of sounds like a, it does sound like a warning though, doesn't it? Oh, a minor twist, a minor turn with his finger style. Are things not, are they not staying back? Or are they struggling with being isolated? Again, having that uh, chord note groove on the drums or the eighth note groove on the drums alongside the polymeter vocal stuff is great. Not necessarily polymeter actually, I think it's just the phrasing of it was three bars to four. It's not like we're going between different time signatures at the same time. Oh no, we're going for that 4-4, four, four. we're going 4 bars for each. I get it. Do a little bit progressive, isn't it? Got that southern drawl to it. Solo time. Interesting filtering and modulation on it. Beautiful harmony here. I like how a rising with that bass goes down. And it resolves. And then it's somehow fresh when it repeats itself. Oh, I love it. I love how we rise up like that just to kind of cascade downwards again. I know we're staying up. Okay. Oh, bass solo at the bottom. No, no, there's just an additional layer there, never mind. That kick thumps. Nice side chaining there. 
that could be the benefit of the simplicity of a drum line is that when you when when it's when it's there, you, you definitely pay attention to it. Too many hits and it's too much to take in amongst everything else, you know. This is probably my favorite. It's probably my favorite of three. King E was great, but it took me a while to really understand what was going on, and it was potentially a little bit too dissonant for my tastes. Doesn't mean it's a bad track though. Music subjective. Oh, it's weird having those vocals go to the left like that with the pits, with the panic. Oh, I don't know how I feel. Wait, I want to hear that again. I don't think I quite caught that, but that's okay. That's it! That's the review! That's a review of Luxury Luxury by Long Term Parking. Three of the tracks off of it. The Middle Way, uh, King E, and Stayed Back. Because this is the conclusion of my review of Long Term Parking's Luxury Luxury with these three tracks. Um, they've got a fair bit of attention, you know. You know 40,000 players across the three is nothing to laugh at. You know, it's nothing to giggle at. That's actually good. I'm glad that they're getting attention because they've written some great tunes. Um, you know, the stories of these three tracks, the middle way is someone figuring out whether their path is the only one or whether they should have taken another and wondering whether to continue or not. King E, I think, is about someone struggling to get by without the hope of King E taking reign. Or maybe it's someone that is dominating them and they are unable to get away with that. And they're just having a really bad time, you know? And they, 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 need, they need that release. And then Stayed Back is about someone, I think, wanting to have a bit of space, a bit of time when people have got power over them and just needing to feel independent and strong on their own and, and, and trying to deal with that difference and leverage there between the two. Maybe it's a group of people or maybe it's one person. I'm not sure, but three very distinct tracks that uh, I didn't always enjoy it primarily because the music didn't make me necessarily feel good. But I don't, again, I don't think that's the point of a song. It's not there to make you feel good. It's meant to be an honest artistic expression from the band or the musician or the artist you're listening to. That's the most important thing. And in that regard, I think that the middle way, King E, Stay Back, Long Term Parking have told some really good stories. And I, I, I enjoyed them when I could understand what was going on. The vocal parts, not only from the featured vocalists, but also I think, um, but I also think like Chris Nick and whoever else was involved, they, they did great. They did great, you know, they were, they, just, they, they were distinct. They were distinct in the way they approached it. There was good use of vocal technique, but a vocal fry, especially in Stayed Back and that low kind of growl there. Well, not necessarily a growl, but it's almost like giving you a warning to sort of like take care and pay attention to it. I, I liked that. We were aware, but also we had lots of vocal modulation in there, some really high falsetto stuff along with a bit of um, filtering there, maybe some like, I don't even know what they would have done to get some of that stuff. They, they chopped the vocals up as well at the end of um, Stayed Back. There was some really wacky kind of creative stuff going on that I think was, it was smart because you kind of need to be doing interesting stuff with vocals to stand out nowadays, as long as it sounds good. But you know, the melodies were interesting and they made sense even when we missed with the approach of the other elements in the mix. We we went at odds with the lengths of the individual s sets or stanzas and, and that was okay you know it made me it forced me to pay attention i think that's the point in it you know the structure of these tracks i think most of them were through composed if there were some verse chorus parts that's fine but either way at the most it was a b a b you had plenty of time for the other instruments in the mix to have their times to shine um especially like that solo in the middle of king e it was great you know nice great to switch up between the 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 vocal lead bits um it was kind of needed i don't think the song could have continued for five and a half minutes without it because again like if you're paying attention you can basically hit just of a track at the two minutes 30 mark and if you don't want another three minutes of that unless you really love that musical motif you know the guitar bass drums piano parts that came in the other instruments were fantastic you know had different tracks with different musical motifs, easy to follow along to. Um, even when there was just one that rolled through it, like in a through composed situation, there were layers added to it so that it didn't become stale, like the high guitar parts and the bass line switching and the drum fills and all that kind of stuff. So that was great. You know, I'm glad that we that we uh, tried to keep 
things you know when you went went to switch it up on the tail ends of stuff and that's always um important because you just cannot assume that someone's going to listen to five minutes of chord note grooves now finally the production of recording mixing mastering was, was was great you know it sounded nice and loud without any pumping or like anything kind of nasty about it you know the the there was lots of dynamic range to it uh you could hear all the quiet bits nicely without the loud bits punching you in the face over and over and over um the eqing stereo panning and then the fix change on the various instruments and limiting you know i've already talked about limiting compression but you know a bit of automation as well as some post-production zazziness as well as the the sample parts and like the middle way and all that it's just great it's just great well done to long-term parking for these three tracks and congrats on their album luxury luxury i wish them the best of luck in future with it and it was a pleasure to review the material but effectively this is my review of luxury luxury by long-term parking hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please do go show them some love via their various social medias and their spotify page stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as you need to help more than ever with all the crazy stuff going on in the world and i will catch you in the next review spot hands out <laughs>